All right, with this evening weather briefing for Monday, December the 19th, and this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. I hope that you guys had a, a great weekend, and I hope that you also had a great Monday. And I'd say some big changes are coming in our weather pattern as we head into, uh, at least as we head close to the Christmas holiday weekend, and I'll explain more about that here in just a little bit. But uh, before that, we we're going to do we're going to be dealing with some uh, warmer temperatures as we head into the next few days, at least through Thursday, and that also may bring some chances for some showers and perhaps some maybe a few thunderstorms too. So uh, I'll have the uh, latest timing on feature on feature casts on who may see some wet weather as we head into the day on Tuesday uh, in just uh, a little bit, and also show you who could see some more rain also as we head towards the later part of the week too with the models. So. All that that I've just said here, you'll see that again, you'll see that here in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look what's happening first off on the radar this evening. And uh, as you can see right now, we are looking pretty quiet. So I'm not expecting any precipitation to, to uh, be dealing with here in central Florida as we head into the rest of tonight. But if you notice over here, just way off of the east coast of Volusia County, there are some showers happening right now. But if I put the loop on, it shows that uh, there could be a slim chance that if you live along, along the coast of Volusia County, including Daytona, you could see a few isolated coastal showers, but I'm not expecting anything widespread. So other than that, we should still be looking dry as we head into the rest of our Monday night. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the current temperatures right now here in central Florida. And as you can see, it's starting to cool things down already. So like right now in Orlando, current temperature is sitting at about 61 degrees. Uh, down a little south into Kissimmee, uh, you're sitting right now with the current temperature at around 63. 62 is the current temperature in Winter Haven. And then right here towards the Melbourne area in Brevard County, it is uh, 64. Up around Titusville, the temperature right now is sitting at 61. Uh, for you all in Sanford, uh, you're sitting with the current temperature at 60. Up in the villages, right now, temperatures are cooling down into the mid-50s. And then the, and the same is also for Ocala. Up into uh, Daytona Beach, right now, you're sitting with the current temperature at 62. Uh, not 62 is the actual temperature, but 60 as well. Maybe that's what I should, what I should say. And up around Palm Coast, uh, at the moment, you're sitting with the current temperature at 57. So if you got any plans for the rest of this evening, uh, just grab the jacket. Uh, but other than that, I expect the weather to stay, uh, again, on the dry side with uh, some mostly clear skies, we'll say. All righty, so I'm going to show you uh, where exactly the rain is at right now. Uh, that's, that's, that is expect, expecting to move into central Florida, heading into the, I guess you can say, the late part of the day of your Tuesday. And uh, let's turn on the high res radar. So it's basically right here. So this band of showers and a few thunderstorms will basically move into our direction heading into the day tomorrow. So as you can see up towards uh, parts of Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and into the southwestern corner of Alabama, uh, there, there are some pretty heavier uh, amounts of uh, heavier, you know, bands of rain, you can say. Uh, happening this evening, but nothing severe. I'm not, I'm not expecting anything uh, as far as severe weather goes as it moves into central Florida tomorrow. But just note that there could be uh, there could be maybe a few isolated storms. Uh, but again, this, the threat for severe weather, severe weather is low. And I was also and also do want to mention that uh, as as we get close into the uh, Christmas holiday weekend, but at, but mostly as we head towards the end of the week, uh, parts of the uh, Midwest. The East Coast could be dealing with a potential of a potential of a nasty snowstorm uh, heading into uh, both Thursday and Friday. So basically, in places like St. Louis, back into parts of uh, Kansas, uh, northern Oklahoma, northern Arkansas, parts of Kentucky, northern Tennessee, Illinois, up into the Great Lakes in the Northeast, uh, looks to be uh, in uh, looks to be on alert for the potential of a again of a nasty snowstorm uh, that could dump. Uh, at least a lot of a lot of amounts of uh, snow heading into Thursday and Friday, but uh, uh, that will not be impacting Central Florida. So, so I'm not expecting any snow uh, once the uh, the once once the uh, weather pattern changes as we get into the 
holiday weekend. But if you do have any uh, travel plans uh, later in the week, so if you're again, again either heading into, into uh, Chicago, Des Moines, St. Louis, Topeka, up into the upper Midwest, perhaps up into uh, Detroit, maybe as far north as Nashville, Cincinnati, up into the Northeast. Uh, again, you may want to check with your fly status and see uh, what the uh, update is because you know you could be you could be impacted at least as, as far as far as your flight goes uh, as the storm does get going. And let's see, we got uh, Luke Scarberry in, in the house this evening. Uh, hello to you. Righty, so let's uh, go ahead and uh, take a look at Futurecast and show you the timing of uh, tomorrow's rain that's going to be moving into uh, Central Florida. And uh, remember, again, if you're just coming into uh, Facebook Live on this uh, Monday evening, please do feel free to go ahead and share this with your friends and your families. And of course, you also know my motto, and that is uh, sharing is caring. All righty, so heading into the rest of tonight. Again, I expect the, the weather to stay mainly dry across most of our viewing area. But there is a slim chance that there could be a few showers uh, that may try to sneak in into northern Marion County by 3 in the morning. But other than that, like I mentioned, we should still be looking pretty dry as we head into the overnight uh, hours and into the first half of Tuesday. Speaking of Daybreak Tuesday, as, as we wake up to around, se around 7 o'clock in the morning, it looks like we'll be looking dry. Again, cannot rule out maybe a few iso isolated coastal showers for parts of coastal Volusia and Flacker counties. But other than that, uh, we'll still be looking again on the dry side heading into tomorrow morning. But again, so it will not be until late in the day is, is when we'll see the rain move in. The better chances, of course. So as we go to around four o'clock, it looks like we'll see some scattered showers develop in all on Interstate 75 between Marion County down into Sumter and Hillsborough counties. And there could be some showers as well up into Daytona and Palm Coast. But the heaviest stuff looks to be looks to looks to be way off towards the west along the Gulf along the Gulf waters heading into uh, the late afternoon of your Tuesday. And then it looks like we'll see that rain shift off to the east a bit as we head towards 6 p.m. So it could be a little bit dicey. Uh, for your e for your evening drive home from work, but still the heaviest stuff appears to be off towards the west in places like Tampa and St. Pete. But here, the rain for Central Florida will still be light to moderate. So if you got if you have to be outdoors tomorrow evening, you may want to take take, uh, take the rain gear and always and always try to be careful while driving on those uh, wet roads uh, if you have to be out uh, tomorrow night. So it looks like the heaviest of the rain will hold off until around nine o'clock tomorrow night as it shifts off, shifts over towards the east along I-4. So it looks like Sanford down into the Orlando Metro, the attractions and down into Polk County and still as far southwest as Tampa can still see some heavier uh, showers and thunder showers heading, heading into mid evening on Tuesday. And then the, the heavy rain will start to diminish by 11 and midnight as it shifts off, shifts off towards, towards the east into uh, Brevard County. And then it looks like we'll see uh, the rest of the rain push off towards uh, the Atlantic, heading into the overnight late tomorrow into early Wednesday. So this means that as we wake up uh, Wednesday morning at 7, uh, we'll be dry. And I do believe we'll see some peaks of sun uh, during the day on Wednesday as well. But it looks like another batch of rain could move in uh, as back into central Florida, that is, as we head into the day on Thursday, which you may see that on the GFS here in a couple of minutes. But other than that, uh, you, if you have any big plans outdoors on Wednesday, it should be another good day to do that. And again, we'll see temperatures remain mild in the way of 70s. And so let's take a look at the rainfall forecast here as we head through the next couple of days. And we're mostly, of course, this most is going to take you uh, to the day on Tuesday uh, as the rain does move in. So it does look like that uh, most of most of us uh, Central Florida, where you see these blue colors, does indicate that we may pick up between about a, about a quarter to a half inch of rain. But you may have to go farther to the southwest into Polk County and down towards Tampa, where there could be picking up between three quarters to maybe even even an inch of accumulating rainfall 
So, so that's how much so that's how much rain we're expecting. I'm not expecting any flooding or anything excessively heavy. So, so that could be some good news. But at least we could use more rain. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take one last look at the radar this evening before we transition before we transition from Barron to the GFS. And once and once again, we are looking dry. So again, the rain will hold off until late in the day tomorrow. So so there you have it. And we got a uh, gift blessing in the house this evening. Well, to be honest with you, gift, uh, I'm not quite sure. I don't really focus on uh, much of the way of national weather. I do. I only. I normally focus on Central Florida's weather. So hope. So so just to be honest. All righty. So let's go ahead and take a look at the GFS models and see what's going to be happening weather-wise as we head into the next couple of weeks, including a big change in our pattern as we get into the Christmas holiday weekend. So we'll start things off with this coming Thursday, which is the 22nd of December. And again, that's when I expect the rain to move back in, but not quite as widespread than it will be than what we're going to be seeing for tomorrow. So there could be just mostly scattered showers heading into the day on Thursday, mostly just on and off uh, for the most part. And as you can see, temperatures will still be warm. So still talking highs in the mid to upper 70s and much chillier up here in the Mississippi Valley where they could be dealing with the with, uh, highs in the 40s and into the low 50s. And it looks like the rain chances will continue to go up as we head into the first half of the day on Friday, which is the 23rd. And some, again, could be locally heavy at times, but I'm not expecting anything as far as excessive rainfall amounts go and flooding, just like the one we'll be, we'll be seeing for your Tuesday. And, uh, and I believe Friday will be the day also uh, that the Arctic front will start to move in from the northwest to the southeast. And there it is. So talking about temperatures dropping quickly from the 70s down into the 50s and low 60s, we'll call for a high heading into the day on Friday. But it's going to be massively cold up in the Mississippi Valley and up in the Panhandle where temperatures may uh, not get out of the 20s and into the 30s. So, yeah, much of the nation is going to be dealing with, dealing with some extreme cold weather uh, heading into uh at least not just for the, the end of the at the end of the week, but also heading into the holiday weekend. So, so the winter gear will definitely need, need will definitely be needed uh, if you have to be outdoors uh, over the holidays. But if we look at the low temperatures uh, for the morning of Christmas Eve, as you can see, the GFS is still showing temperatures uh, again starting off in the upper twenties, especially if you go up north of Orlando and others, including here in, in the metro, starting to go off in the low 30s. But you'll have to go a little bit up north because up in the Mississippi Valley, uh, they're gonna be dealing with uh, temperatures for lows in the teens and low 20s, and that is extremely cold. So again, be sure be sure you get ready for the, for the extreme, or, or I should say for the major pa uh, pattern change in our temperatures as we get close to Christmas. Just looking to see if we there, there's like if there's a, like a wind chill product and I'm not seeing it, but but I do believe wind chills for Central Florida could get as cold as the teens and low twenties. And again, these those will not be low temperatures; those will be what the what temperatures will feel like. So yes, so it's going to feel a lot colder heading into uh, once again as we once again as we head into uh, the the holidays. But let's uh, look at the European model and compare that to the GFS, see what it has to say about, uh, you know, uh, about the cold temperatures for early Saturday morning. And uh, it looks like uh, temperatures could get a little bit more colder, according to the European, than what you saw on the GFS. So it shows that temperatures could start off in the mid-20s up in Marion County and again early Saturday with others uh, 
almost the same like it is for the GFS, with mostly just upper 20s and into the low 30s. And the same also for the Mississippi Valley. So still dealing with could still deal with temperatures for lows in the teens and 20s, lower 20s, that is. But as oops, the wrong button there. Let's let's get back to where, where we left off here. Let's uh, go back to the GFS, and here are the and here's the high temperatures we're going to be expecting for Saturday. And unfortunately, it's not going to be a big warm up, so it's going to be really an awfully cold day uh, on Christmas Eve in our state. We're talking about temperatures struggling to get out of the 40s. So yeah, it's going to so yeah, that's how cold it's going to be getting as we head into Christmas Eve. But if you go farther up north into the Mississippi Valley, temperatures may stay below freezing for highs with upper 20s and low 30s. So, again, this is why winter is definitely here for sure. But let's uh, go ahead and uh, go, go back to the European model. Back to the last run. And look what the European is uh, indicating here uh, as of tonight. Uh, what you saw in the GFS, it's, it showed that temperatures may only, may only struggle to get out of the 40s on Saturday on Christmas Eve. But if you go up towards, uh, let's say, the villages in Ocala, the European is showing temperatures struggling, struggling to get out of the 30s. And that's pretty cold when temperatures are in the 30s for highs. And usually, usually that, that doesn't happen in our state during the winter months usually happens for lows but it wouldn't surprise me if temperatures get up into the 30s up in our northern and western counties so still, still there's still a lot of time to watch the models uh and you know there can still be uh changes to it as soon as we get closer and hopefully we'll find which one is in a better agreement As we uh, look at the low temperatures for the morning of Christmas Day, which is the 25th, and as you can see, pretty much the same like it is for the morning of Christmas Eve, and that's mostly low temperatures in the upper 20s, especially if you go up towards Marion County into Volusia and Flackler and others in the low to mid 30s, and still another cold, uh, another extreme cold start to the day on Christmas Day in the in the Missis in the Mississippi Valley, where there could be lows in the teens and, and into the low 20s. But if, but if we uh, go ahead and uh, take a look at the European models, let's get back to that. Only shows uh, temperatures for lows on Christmas morning on this run. Uh, again, the same thing like for the morning of Christmas Eve, but this is a different model run. So just keep that in mind. So it shows that temperatures could start off in the low to mid 20s up into our northern counties like marion county may see a low temperature of 23 according to the european on christmas morning and perhaps a low around 26 in daytona and palm coast with other locations in the upper 20s and into the low 30s so yeah it's a big change and according to the european model as we head towards the second half of christmas day it shows that temperatures may may yet again struggle to get out of the upper 30s in the same locations like Ocala in the villages with others in the low to mid 40s. But let's go back to the GFS run and see what it has to say about the about the temperature, high temperature uh, forecast for Christmas Day. And according to that, it shows that temperatures may only struggle to get out of the 40s heading into that morning or heading to, into, the, into that day rather. And temperatures up in the Mississippi Valley could, again, struggle to get out of the upper 20s and into the low 30s. So it's going to be really a very cold Christmas for the southeast and elsewhere around the nation heading into, uh, again, the next coming days. So please be ready, folks. And again, if you know anybody that's coming down to Florida over the holiday weekend, they're, well, they're not going to need uh, those uh, tank tops or bikinis, flip-flops, at least heading into the holiday weekend. They, they definitely, they definitely may, want, may want to 
pack up a winter gear because they're going to need that once they get into the state. But as we take a look at the low temperatures for next Monday morning, as the holiday weekend concludes, this is the morning of December 26th, and the GFS is uh, showing that we may see lows, uh, maybe not as extremely cold that it will be for the Christmas Eve or Christmas Day lows, but still cold enough uh, to be, you know, to produce uh, temperatures in the upper 20s and into the low 30s. So I don't see any mid-20s here on the GFS which is a good thing. So, so at least that's a little bit of a slight relief, but still, again, not, not really a, not, we won't be feeling that pretty. Up to the north in the Mississippi Valley, temperatures, instead of being in the teens, could start off in the low to mid twenties, heading into uh, next Monday morning. And again, if we go back to the European model, Look at the, if we look at the uh, temperatures, uh, the low temperature uh, map for the morning of, of the uh, 26th on the European, it shows that we could see lows for some of you in the mid-20s, like up here in Marion County with others in the upper 20s and into the low 30s. And perhaps the European is showing temperatures could start off in the upper teens in parts of Alabama, the uh, Florida Panhandle, and for southwest Georgia with others around the Mississippi Valley in the lower 20s. <clears throat> and the European for the for highs that day may only again struggle to get out of the 40s for some of you. But if you go here just to the I-4 in East Corridor, temperatures may start to get up into the 50s, but still not a big warm up as the holiday weekend concludes. And again, this is for the beginning of next week. And thankfully, it shows that temperatures will not may not be as cold up in the Mississippi Valley, but still again not a big warm up. So instead of seeing 20s and low 30s up in the valley, temperatures will start to get back above freezing with upper 30s and low 40s. And again, let's go back to the GFS and see what it has to say about uh, the high temperatures for uh, next Monday. And again, I clicked the wrong button there, so I apologize. All right, so here's the GFS uh, temperature uh, map here for Monday of next week. And these are for highs, like, once again, and it shows the same thing like the European. So this means that temperatures for some of you may start to be go back into the upper 40s and into the low 50s. And again, still not, a, not still not much of a warm up. So you still need to have the winter gear handy if you're going to be out and about, uh, you know, heading into early next week. And the, and the GFS is showing that temperatures may only climb into the upper 30s up into central, in the central part of Alabama and Georgia. Again, that's not, as, that's, that's not as cold than it will be for Christmas weekend, but still not, not much in the way of, the war, of a warm-up. But if you go south of central Alabama and Georgia, temperatures will, or I should say, may climb up into the low to maybe even mid-40s. Now, heading into the first half of next Tuesday, the GFS is showing that we could see low temperatures instead of seeing 20s and low 30s starting off. Uh, we may see temperatures start off in the mid to upper 30s. So that's a little better, but still not not real much of not real much of the way of a, a big relief as of yet. But we're getting there. Up in the Mississippi Valley region, temperatures may start off in the upper 20s and low 30s. So that's uh, again a little bit better than seeing teens and low 20s. Uh, you know what at least what they're expecting over the holiday weekend but again this is for tuesday morning of next week so thankfully temperatures will not start will not be as extremely cold uh if that is the case and by the way it's not just the cold temperatures we'll be dealing with over the holiday weekend and into early next week but we'll see some sunshine too we're talking a cold sunshine but as we head into the rest of the day on next Tuesday here on the GFS, it shows that we may see again another dry day in our state. Could be a little bit of some rain up here around parts of the Mississippi Valley region, but nothing quite as widespread at this time. 
And here's a look at the highs for next Tuesday. And it looks like we'll continue to slowly but surely warm things back up into the 50s and in perhaps some of you in the low 60s. So that's, uh, again, a little bit of a relief, but still not a big warm up. You might have to go far, farther down to the South Florida where temperatures may uh, climb back into the upper 60s and maybe possibly some low 70s as we get close to the New Year's holiday. But if you go back up to the north in the Mississippi Valley, temperatures will still be feeling chilly with some 40s and low 50s. Thankfully, there's no more 30s for highs uh, if that is the case as we head into the day on Tuesday of next week. And yet again, temperatures will not be as cold uh, as next Wednesday morning approaches. This is uh, uh, the 28th. So it looks like temperatures could start off in the upper 30s up in Marion County with others in the low to mid 40s. So that's a little better. Could still be a, could be starting could still start off uh, somewhat cold up in the Mississippi Valley and up in the Panhandle, heading into next Wednesday morning with 20s and low to mid 30s. But again, nothing extreme, nothing extreme than it will than we'll be seeing over the holiday weekend. Then heading into the rest of the day on Wednesday of next week, it shows yet again, much of the Southeast will be dry, but there is a little bit of some activity happening off towards the Caribbean and for the Bahamas, but it'll mostly stay uh, far east of us, uh, at least at this time as we head into uh, the midweek next week. And here's a look at the high temperatures for midweek. And as you can see, we'll be mostly we're going to start to warm things back for most of us in the in the low to mid 60s. So, so we're going to transition from cold to cooler temperatures, uh, if that is the case. So temperatures up in Marion County may still struggle to get out of the 50s, if that is the case uh, on that day. If you go up north into the Mississippi Valley, still temperatures continue to stay pretty chilly with some 40s and 50s. And then as we move on into next Thursday, uh, December 29th, it shows that yet again, the Southeast will turn out dry. So not expecting any thing widespread or, or anything significant at this point. And it looks like we'll see temperatures continue to stay on the cool side. So I'm still talking highs in the mid 60s, maybe some upper 60s as well. But you'll have to go farther south in the South Florida, where temperatures may only climb into the low 70s. So it'll be the first time that we'll see temperatures get back warm like that since uh, uh, after Christmas. And it looks like the temperatures up in the Mississippi Valley will be starting to uh, get a get, will start to begin to get to be getting a much relief from the cold temperatures, and that'll be mostly in the way of 50s and into the low to mid 60s. So that's uh, better than seeing extreme an extreme Arctic blast, you can say. All righty, as we head into the land of voodoo country, this will take you to Friday, December 30th. And as you can see that still much of central Florida will be dry. But if you notice down here towards the southeastern coast of the state, could be a few coastal showers, but nothing too widespread at this time. And the same could also happen up here across the western side of the Panhandle up into southern Alabama and Mississippi. And here's a look at the high temperatures. And it looks like we'll start to see temperatures climb back into the upper 60s and maybe for some others in the low 70s. So you can break out, break out those flip flops and those short sleeve uh, T-shirts, tank tops and shorts again, if the trend is correct. Still could be some 50s up here across parts of southeastern Alabama and central Georgia. But if you go farther west, into, farther west into the western part of Alabama and Mississippi, and even Louisiana, of course, temperatures will be a lot warmer in the upper 60s and into maybe even mid 70s. So that's uh, a lot better. So just keep the, so just keep those uh, fingers crossed. So ho hopefully we'll see some pretty nice warm weather heading into uh, the conclusion of 2022 and to open up 2023 for those of you that do not like the cold. Now heading into New Year's Eve, which is Saturday, December 31st, we may have to, we may have to deal with some showers here in parts of uh, central Florida, but the rain chances at this time looks to be low between 30 to 40, but there is a strong system off towards the west that could increase the rain chances in parts of Mississippi, western Alabama, and Louisiana. So that's something we could watch, but again, things could change as we get closer. And look at that. For New Year's Eve, we're talking temperatures warming back into the mid-70s. 
And again, we're hoping we'll see the, these temperatures uh, get get uh, get this warm. Again, for those of you that do not like the cold temperatures, which is what we'll be dealing, we'll be dealing with here over the Christmas weekend. And it looks like temperatures will also be looking uh, pretty pretty nice and mild up in the Mississippi Valley, but slightly cool in the upper 50s and into the mid 60s. And then as we head into the New Year's Day holiday, so this will kick off the first day of 2023, which will be on Sunday, the 1st of, Janu of January. That same system will start to uh, bring some uh, increasing chances for rain here in central Florida. As of right now, the heaviest looks to be uh, farther up to the north and west of here. So from Pensacola up into the southwestern corner of Alabama in eastern Mississippi, there could be some totals that may range between two to four inches if that is the case. That's something, again, we'll have, we'll have to watch. But again, it's two weeks out, so things could change as we get closer. And that could be ahead of another front that will start to slide through. And if so, this means the temperatures will get down just a tad, a tad bit cooler uh, with some upper 60s and low 70s in our northern and western counties and perhaps still some upper 70s and maybe some lower 80s uh, from Orlando and south ahead of the front as the new day of 2023 approaches. And again, this is for January 1st. And it looks like we may see the rain continue as, as the system shifts off towards the east a bit as Monday the, tw uh, Monday the 2nd approaches. That's two weeks from today. And the heaviest right now looks to stay farther southwest and into the southwestern Gulf Coast of Florida. So places like Fort Myers, Marco Island, Sarasota could see some that could see some locally heavy rain potentially heading into uh, the 2nd of January with the uh, others uh, picking up between about between about, we'll say, a quarter to a half inch. But yeah, we'll still see some. We'll still see the rain continue heading into uh, the first, the beginning, the beginning of the first week of the uh, of the new year, with uh, the rain chances winding down up in the Mississippi Valley. And it looks like we'll see temperatures uh, get down cool. So instead of seeing extreme cold temperatures behind the front, we may see just uh, just a cool pattern with upper 60s and low 70s, and that's not too bad at all. Same thing up here in the Mississippi Valley. Temperatures will cool down into the 50s and into the 60s, maybe around at or near 70 as well, like in southeastern Georgia. Uh, heading into, again, the first day of, uh, or the first Monday, rather, of 2023. But just note that there could be some adjustments uh, as we get closer, because this is two weeks out. So I will definitely keep you all updated. Let's see, we got uh, Susan, Susan Ashley in the house this evening as well. Uh, well, you're welcome, uh, Susan, and that's uh, so kind of you for saying that. Glad that you enjoy watching my uh, uh, Facebook Live uh, weather feeds. All right, now heading into two weeks from tomorrow, that'll be for Tuesday, January 3rd, and you can see that we may see some showers uh, left over, maybe during the first half of the day on the 3rd, and that could leave the second half uh, of the day uh, dry. And here's a look at the high temperatures. And yet again, to kick off 2023, looking nice with only in the way of mid to upper 70s, maybe some, maybe some lower 80s down here in southern Florida and some upper 50s and into the mid 60s in the Mississippi Valley. And last but not least, the GFS trend ends to Wednesday, January 4th, and there can still be some showers uh, around portions of our viewing area and right now the chances looks to be mostly just a long a little bit along and east of i4 you can say at about 40 percent leaving the northern half of the state dry and as we look at the height look at the high temperatures and and in the uh, update there it looks like we'll see again the same thing only temperatures for highs in the mid to upper 70s and some 80s down here in southern florida a little bit cooler up in the Mississippi Valley, but not bad with some 50s, 60s, and low 70s. So there you have it there, folks. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start, and start wrapping up this live uh, Facebook feed on this Monday evening. So I expect to have another live update tomorrow night, same time at 8 p.m. And I'll keep you guys updated, of course, on the uh, potentially dangerously cold, cold weather we'll be dealing with here as we get close to the Christmas weekend which is by posting more notes and updates on my blog and social media platforms 24 seven. 
In the meantime, hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and remember to continue to stay safe by taking care of yourselves and each other and God bless.